Today, I'm gonna to share something that I've actually never talked about before. Back in 2019, I hit rock bottom, tore my bicep, got addicted to painkillers, and gained 40 pounds of fat. I truly, at one point, thought my fitness career was over. But today, I'm gonna to show you how I turned it all around and how you can do the same thing no matter where you are right now in your life. This is me now. But let's go back to 2019 to go to the beginning of this story. What's up guys, Josiah Novak, owner and founder of The True Transformation here. And today I'm gonna to talk about a comeback story that took place back in 2019. But this isn't just about me. This is also about you and how you can overcome anything that you feel like is in your way when it comes to your fitness journey or just progressing in life in general. So back in 2019, I actually traveled to Austin, Texas, and I was running multiple Spartan races with a group of clients of mine. Now, I had gotten into Spartan racing for fun. It was almost an addition to just the general fitness routine that I had maintained for quite some time. So the first race was a Spartan super race on Saturday. The conditions were awful. It was raining, it was muddy, everything was super slippery. And truth be told, knowing what I know now, I wasn't fully prepared for the race, even though I thought I was back then. I was prepared to do relatively well, but my entire body wasn't trained properly. My grip strength probably needed a little bit more work, and I really wasn't prepared for the conditions of that day. So in the middle of the race, I was on what's called the rings, where you swing from one ring to the next, and it was raining, so the rings were slippery. And I can remember having anxiety about the rings because naturally I'm a bigger guy. I'm over 215 pounds most of the time. And so swinging from ring to ring just feels a little unnatural for me. And I'll never forget reaching for a ring about halfway through the obstacle, grabbing it and feeling my hands slip because it was super wet from the rain. And as they started to slip, I tried to re-grip and in doing so my arm twisted and my arm, instead of just letting go and falling off the rings, which I should have done, I tried to re-grip and in doing so, I tore my bicep because in that short little instance, all the tension went directly on the bicep, which caused it to snap. One moment, I was on top of my game. The next, I was in crazy pain, just trying to finish the race. Now, I'm a crazy person, and I actually came back the next day and ran another Spartan, this time a Spartan sprint, but I didn't do really any of the obstacles. I just ran it, did as many as I could, and kept my arm in kind of a homemade sling the entire time. Once I got back, reality started to set in. I went to the doctor, he told me I had to have surgery. And next thing you know, I'm under the operating table again. And the next thing you know, I'm on the operating table, getting ready to go under the knife again, feeling like, what has happened? But here's one of the biggest lessons I want you to take away today. Never stop moving forward. Even though I was really deeply depressed following this injury, the one piece of advice that I think looking back completely saved me was that I could still train my non-injured side. Even though I tore my left bicep, I was still able to train my right arm and the other half of my upper body. And by the way, this isn't just bro science. Like studies actually show that by training the non-injured side, it allows for the injured side to heal faster and more efficiently. This is actually called cross education. And for me, it was a total game changer because it allowed me to stay somewhat consistent with my workout routine. Now I know what you're thinking. Small little injuries can really bring you down, especially motivation wise. You know, if you've been hurt in the gym before and now you're concerned about having that same thing happen again, it can be debilitating mentally to feel like, you know, I, I just not cut out for this. You know, I'm getting too old. My body's broken down. Maybe you played sports before, maybe you just had bad experiences throwing your knees out, back out, whatever and you're hesitant to pursue physical excellence again because of some of these injuries that you've had in the past. But that's where you're completely wrong. Inside of our coaching program, we work with people from all walks of life with all sorts of training histories, a lot of guys who have had pre-existing injuries coming into our program. And what we're able to do just by the experience that we have is we're able to actually build programs around some of these things and most importantly, fix some of these issues, right? So you don't have to be stressed out about throwing your back out or hurting your knees, you can actually train smart and build muscle without having the risk of injury hanging over your head. Oftentimes, it's just exercise execution, which we help people do inside of our program, especially with some of our hybrid days where some of our clients come out and see us in person. You know, We can fix these things instead of always avoiding them or having them as an excuse for why we're not on track. If you're super serious about your fitness and you're looking to transform your body this year permanently, once and for all, you wanna find a program that was the last program you have to invest in. Check out the links in the description below. You can learn all about our program there. Now, after I started my recovery, I got into what I call my running phase. This is where I started to fall in love with running and even cycling because I had to have something, right? I couldn't just train the non-injured side of my body all the time, even though I did a lot of that. I needed something to break me out of this funk that I was in, this depression that I was in, 
because honestly, I felt like my body was deteriorating. I was losing muscle. My diet was all sorts of bad, right? I was just eating to really just cure my feelings and make me feel better. And so I was adding fat pretty rapidly. And this was a crucial mistake. You know, even though I got into running and I was doing more movement or doing at least enough movement to keep me sane, I completely neglected the nutrition side of things. And I always joke around with people now, but I say, hey, you can't outmove a poor diet. And this was the case with me too, even though I was biking, I was running more, I was doing more cardio than I ever had before, my body was still gaining fat and actually losing muscle in the process. And as you know, if you've watched any of my content, you know, calories are king. And so I was just eating too many calories. I was eating a lot of processed food, a lot of junk food, it was giving me that quick dopamine hit. And I'm sure a lot of you have been in similar circumstances, right? Where you just feel out of it. You feel depressed. You feel maybe like something bad happened in your life and you turn to food for comfort. This is totally normal, but it does lead to weight gain and we have to get control of it quickly. Otherwise, time goes by quick and all of a sudden we look in the mirror and we're ashamed of how we look and feel. So now we're to the dark times. It wasn't just the physical challenge of having to recover. I had some mental issues as well. Following my surgery, I got put on painkillers to help me get through the pain that comes from healing a torn bicep. This whole thing started innocently, right? Just taking the painkillers as prescribed, but I actually got addicted to these painkillers and I suffer from this addiction for a while. I didn't really talk about it, to be honest. I thought it was somewhat normal just to be in search of painkillers all the time. Like family members would get surgeries and I would you know, grab a couple of their pills. Or I would ask for a couple of their pills. My brother had multiple surgeries and I was like, hey, can I get some of those painkillers? This took me down a pretty rough path where my sleep was completely thrown off. At night, you know, I was taking a little painkiller to try to relax. It just became a really bad addiction for a while. And of course, this led to even worse eating habits because this stuff messes with your brain, right? It's, it, it puts you in a weird state where, for me, it was like having the munchies all the time. So I was snacking late at night. I was even playing video games late at night, which is totally out of source for me. Uh, if you know who I am, I don't do that kind of stuff, but my brain just wasn't wired the way I wanted it to be. And so I started to incorporate a lot of poor habits. And I'm sharing this because I just want you to know that we all have our battles, man. Like I've had my struggles. This is just one of many things I've battled with in my life. And truth be told, like in the moment when you're in the struggle, it often feels very lonely. And I just don't want you to feel like you're stuck, right? We can be stronger than that. We can get out of that, right? We don't have to suffer in silence. We don't have to be alone. We don't have to do things alone. We can get help, right? It's what our program is all about. You know, it's not just about getting abs, which don't get me wrong. That's an amazing part of things, right? You want to look incredible. You want to feel great about your body, but it also comes with the mental gains. And it also comes with the ability to connect with like-minded people who have had struggles and move past them and be able to fight them and, and move, move on in life. So I'll never forget being able to start lifting again once my bicep had healed enough and was strong enough to begin a relatively regular weightlifting program. But I had to rebuild from the ground up. You know, I had lost some serious muscle, I gained a ton of fat, and so I was looking at a transformation phase in front of me. I started with a semi-dirty bulk and I was excited to get back in the gym full time and be able to train my injured side again, and be able to just lift like I used to. But I had lost muscle, so I went back to my early days of trying to add size. Now, I'm blessed with genetics where I do build muscle relatively fast in comparison to the average person. But I know I can build it even faster when I eat a lot of food. Now, in my head, I had already gained a decent amount of fat, so I was like, you know what? Whatever, like I'm just gonna gain some more fat, but I'm gonna add the muscle back that I had lost in the process of healing my bicep. So I knew I had to bite the bullet and just be okay with not having abs for a while because I needed to get the muscle back as quickly as possible so I could start cutting again. I don't wanna start cutting after having lost so much muscle. I would've been feeling really skinny, out of sorts, and I know my body needed calories to get the muscle and strength back that I had lost. Now the good news is, after a long layoff from lifting, your body is primed for growth. There is a real thing called muscle memory. You know, where you've had muscle before and your body's able to add that muscle back quicker because you've had it before. So it's a real thing and thankfully, the process of adding the muscle back wasn't a multiple year long process. After about a solid six months of a semi-dirty bulk where I had added some more fat, I was eating a lot of food, some of it not so healthy, but just sh chasing strength gains, chasing muscle gains, um, it was time for me to start cutting because at this point, I was honestly ashamed of how my body looked with my shirt off, and I knew that if I didn't change something soon, it was gonna get way too out of control. Now, after having been 65 pounds overweight in the past, losing body fat uh, is a relatively simple process for me. 
Uh, it just comes from a few simple key things. Number one, uh, making sure my protein stays moderately high. So I use about a gram of protein per pound of goal body weight. My calories when I was getting back into the swing of things with cutting were around 12 times my current body weight. I started slow because I knew coming off of such a mentally taxing experience of getting hurt, being depressed, battling with pain pills and dealing with that whole addiction and just trying to get my mind right. I knew I couldn't jump into something rapid in terms of fat loss. So I focused on the basics. You know, I cut out a lot of the processed crap that I'd been eating for so long. You know, I tried to stick to one ingredient whole foods and I got back to what I enjoy, which is making healthy food taste good. You know, in, in all reality, it just kind of comes down to simplicity. You know, I found meals that I had maybe disregarded for a while that actually do taste good, that are easy to put together, that don't require a five-star chef to make in the kitchen. Things that I knew if I eat these things all the time, I'm gonna enjoy my diet pretty much all the time. The whole idea here is I wanted to preserve as much muscle as possible, having just lost a bunch and gained it back, and also get rid of all the extra fat that I had accumulated in recovering from my bicep tear. The one mistake that a lot of guys make in a situation like this when they're transitioning from a bulk to a cut, and it was one that I didn't make this time and I'm so thankful for it because I think it actually helped me continue to add more muscle following my bulk, was I kept training heavy. You know, I kept getting stronger. Part of this was because I had lost so much strength in my left arm that it made sense for me to continue on pushing the strength. But a lot of guys, you know, drop the weight, they go super high reps, and they start doing tons of cardio because they think that's the ticket to shedding fat. When in reality, that's the last thing you want to do in most cases. In most cases, you want to keep pushing for strength gains. I would argue that you always want to try to get stronger or at a bare minimum, maintain your strength, especially when moving into a cutting phase. Now, the fat started melting off and ever since then, which was right around the end of 2020 going into 2021, I feel like my physique has been at either its all-time best or getting better as time goes on. Every year since, I've been able to make gains in the gym in terms of muscle and then whenever I do a hardcore cut to kind of just lose a little bit of fat to sharpen things up, I feel like I look better year after year. And this is a testament to our systems. It's not just because, oh, I have this tremendous amount of willpower or discipline or desire. Yeah, I have some of those things, but for me, it's because I have systems. You know, I know what I need to do, and it's not rocket science. It's simple. And I have an amazing support team. You know, not only do I have hundreds of clients uh, inside of our programs, but I have our team, you know, I have guys who work with me who are also amazing men, amazing fathers, like people who aspire to be great in all fronts in life, you know, not just with their bodies, but with their faith, with their finances, just as a human being showing up with a high standard. You know, I, I know the abs are great and trust me, I don't want to lose my abs anymore ever again. I don't want to have a bicep tear, but you know, God forbid I do. I know how to get past it, right? Because I know I have my team, I know I have accountability, I know I have systems that work and don't require crazy, in-depth, complicated thinking in order to execute. So there you have it, guys. That's my recent journey over the past five years from rock bottom in 2019 to where I am now. It wasn't easy, but you know, nothing good is. Uh, all great things come from difficult times. And of course, it didn't happen overnight, you know. So if you're out there and you're 30, 40 pounds overweight or you're just not happy with your physique, I want to encourage you that, first of all, it's not too late. The perfect time to start is right now. It's all we have. It's the present. You know, we can't go to the past. We can't fast forward to the future. We just have today. And there's never going to be the perfect time to do things. No, no time will come where all the stars align, your schedule clears out, stress goes away, and everything is just falls into place for you to get in shape. Because I promise you, even if that time were to come, Shortly thereafter, you would reach a stressful time because that's just life. Life just throws waves at you, right? Where you have to swim with it, you gotta take cover, you gotta work through it, right? And ultimately, you have to learn how to keep fitness a permanent part of your day to day, even when times aren't perfect. So, if you're out there struggling, whether it's with an injury or you're just overweight and you're ashamed of how you look with your shirt off and you're really sick and tired of it, right? You just don't wanna live in this body for the rest of your life. You know that now is the time to change because you've had enough and you look around and you see other people having success and you're like, why not me? Well, here's what we can do. We can actually set you. So what I'd encourage you to do is take a look at the links in the description of this video. We have multiple things that you can check out. One being our actual coaching program where we actually help guys with kids with a busy demanding career who are successful in multiple areas of their life become successful with their body. Raise the standard. Actually jump into full integrity 
with their physical appearance. So that they're not just telling their kids how to live. They're not just trying to be leaders in their job. They're actually walking the walk every single day. And they feel absolutely incredible taking their shirt off. They feel good at the beach. They feel good at the pool. If that's you and you're looking for a permanent transformation, check out the link in the description of this video. In the meantime, if this video was helpful, if you enjoyed this story and some of the ideas and lessons that came from it, let me know in the comments. Until next time, remember, life moves fast. Make it count. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.